So, hi everyone. Good morning. Good evening. I'm not sure what time is it for you. It's morning for me. So, good morning. Um, the presentation I'm going to give you guys is titled "My Robot Detecting the Undetected Using Deep Learning," and I hope the title doesn't sound as bad as it is because I know cybersecurity researchers uh, usually fear deep learning or machine learning and everything advertisement, but I promise you this is not an advertisement uh, presentation. It's a completely technical talk. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Yael Dijes, and I'm a security data science team lead at Akamai Technologies, which I'll explain in a bit what does it mean. Um, I've been doing cybersecurity for a really long time, probably ever since I was 18 years old. And um, a little bit about myself. So. I wanted to kind of describe how my day look, days look now that uh, we're in a pandemic and we're all at home. So usually my day consists of botnets, traffic, data, algorithms, and personally I also enjoy reading and painting and also a bit of gaming, I must admit. So I hope you all can relate. And I wanted to kind of explain my point of view and to give you an insight at why I'm doing what I'm doing. So where I'm coming from is basically a DNS empire, which is Akamai. And how did they get to this point? Um, maybe most of you know that Akamai is one of the largest CDN providers, which means that they have a lot of internet hosted on their servers. And with time, they evolved an understanding that they can create a lot of cybersecurity intelligence based on that um, data. And so this is basically what I'm doing. So. I have probably one of the largest DNS data sets in the world, and I have the privilege of looking for cybersecurity threats over this data and then essentially block it for everyone here. Um, so I would like you to keep in mind during this presentation that my point of view is just massive amounts of DNS traffic, HTTP traffic, specifically here it's DNS, but like massive amounts of traffic, and keep that in mind while I go through the presentation. So. What are we going to cover today? So first of all, for, first of all, I'm going to introduce you to a botnet called MyLobot that I'm not sure any of you have ever heard uh, this name before. Then I'm going to go over a little bit in short what is a DGA, in case um, some of you might not know what it means, and how did the defense community tackle this problem so far. And then I'm going to talk about specifically how we at Akamai and I specifically uh, tackle this issue. I'm going to um, report results in the wild. This is not just an algorithmic conversation. This is like real reporting and real results. And I will go over in details specifically about my robot, which I think uh, you all will find very interesting. So what is my robot? Back at the end of 2018, there were a lot of reports or a few reports about this new emerging botnet. Um, you can see some vendors like um, CenturyLink, Tread Micro, and Morphisec, and Deep Instinct. And you, see, you can see um, a lot of blogging about it, and they were talking about how sophisticated it is. I know uh, we just talked about the sophisticated term being abused, but um, you can see that the specific botnet that they reported, and this is specifically taken from the blog written by Deep Instinct, that it was infused with a lot of evasion techniques. So it had anti-VM and anti-debugging and code injection and process hollowing and so on and so forth, but specifically for the communication part or the network part, which you can all understand this is what I'm interested in because I come from the network point of view, they used um, two specific techniques performed to evade network def defense mechanisms, such as delaying the CMC communication and also a DGA. So what is a DGA? Let's go back a, sec, a second. So here on the left of the screen, you can see a computer that I, the botmaster, managed to infect. And you can see that there is a client on there, a malware. And it obviously needs to communicate with a server in some kind of manner and form the command control channel. And let's assume that I managed to create this channel using this domain name, botmaster.com. And this is a way for me to tell the bot, the bot or the malware what I wanted to do and send me data in return. But I think we can all obviously intuitively understand that if, as a defensor, if as a, as a defense uh, system, I were to detect this botnet or this domain as relating to malicious activity, I can simply block it 
for eternity. And then this botnet wouldn't be operating at all. So this is a one point failure for this botnet and this operation. So obviously attackers would want to um, avoid the scheme of defense. And this is why DGAs were invented. What is a DGA? It's an acronym that stands for Domain Generation Algorithm. It's a piece of code that attackers write into their malwares that their whole goal is to create, create a really large list of really random looking domain names. But the key sauce here is that it's not actually random. It's something that is quite predictable based on a key or a seed or a, um, something that is shared between both parties, the client and the server. And it makes it available for them to understand which domains are going to be created every day. So say we're waking up day number one, the, the malware woke up or the client and the server, the attacker woke up as well. They both run the same code using the same key, so they generate the same list of domain names. And because they are so randomly looking, most of them are not going to be registered. So you can see that most of them have the NX response for the DNS query. But only one of them is going to be to have an IPN. The way that that happened is that the attacker or the server, the bot master, only needs to pick one of those domains to perform uh, the communication on for that day. So what the attacker does is that they choose a randomly domain out of that huge list, they register it, and then when the client queries all of those domains, one of them is actually going to form the communication channel. So one of them is actually going to be successful at communicating with the server. Now, day number two, the same thing happens, but a completely new set of domains is created. So again, the attacker needs to choose one of those domains, register them, and then this is going to be used for the DJ, for the command control communication. Now, this scheme makes us defenders um, needing to detect those domains and block them essentially day one. Like we need to block it five minutes after it happened or the second it happens. We need to understand that this is happening because tomorrow it's not going to be relevant anymore. The domain is going to be different and I need to be able to detect this continuously and over time. So this evasion technique specifically is obviously very visible in the DNS level. And mind you that I come from the DNS empire. So obviously this is an issue that is really interesting to us. And to circle back, MiloBot was using this technique, this evasion technique, as one of those techniques that um, they were using. So how did the defense community, community tackle this problem so far? So um, this is a snapshot of um, this is like a, a photo from a GitHub uh, that belongs to a fellow researcher that I really appreciate called Butter J. So shout out to you. And this is an example of what the research community and the defense community used to do so far for evading DGA based malware. So once we were able to get a hold of a malware, of a binary that has a DGA code in it, we can essentially reverse engineer it down to the uh, specific DGA code and then re-implement it in Python. And this is what you can see here from his, GitHub, from his GitHub. And what's interesting here is that once you have this code, you can use this code to generate all the domain names that are going to be created, right? But that's not entirely true because you also need the key, the seed that would create this list of domains. So this branches out to two types of uh, scenarios. The first one is that I have the key and therefore I can simply generate uh, the domains every day and then block them ahead of time. And this is really useful. But the second uh, branch or type of scenario is that we might not have the seed, in which case we would either need to uh, brute force it or uh, kind of break the seed or that, or we'll be sad because we will have the code, but we are not able to create the domains that are going to be created tomorrow. So for the brute forcing part, Assuming you have really massive amount of computational sources, um, you are able. Usually, you should be able to br to break these seeds based on the patterns if you have traffic. So, say I have uh, massive amounts of DNS traffic, and I know how the patterns are are going to look. I can look for a very narrow, specific space and try to understand that this pattern could belong to this specific malware, and this is the code, and then try to break the seed. But this is essentially the first, let's call it, real solution for handling DGA-based um, malwares. 
But there were two inherent issues here. The first one is that how does it detect new malwares? Like how does it detect malwares that are using DGAs and we see the pattern in traffic, but we've never seen it before. We don't have the sample. We, we don't have the reverse of it. And what about DGAs who weren't able to break their seed? Like I have the sample. This is so frustrating. Like I know how the malware looks, but I'm not able to create those CMC domains in, ahead of time because I weren't able to break the seed. This is ridiculous. Like, I have so much information and yet I'm still helpless. So at this point, let's say that we have a goal that is threefold for not trying to create a new mechanism for um, handling DGA-based malwares. So my first goal would be that I want to be able to block domains that um, of malwares that I do have their sample and I do know their pattern, but I just couldn't break them. The second goal here would be that I want to be able to detect the new malwares. Like, I want to be able to understand that this is a malware that is using a DGA that was never seen before. And a bonus goal here would be, what if I could also detect and block in traffic everything that it is already known? Because in this case, we would have a holistic system that is basically diminishing the DGA problem to zero. Like, it wouldn't be an issue. So we want a holistic system that would block DGA domains in traffic. So let's solve this together. Like, let's do some uh, exercise together, maybe. So I think my first intuition was, wait, but it doesn't. It didn't look anything like the domains that I query in traffic usually. Like, it looks completely gibberish. I should be able to understand that this is coming from a DGA based only on that intuition. And if we formalize this intuition, what you can see here is the distribution of frequency of using characters in domain names in those DGA-based malwares. And you can see a pretty um, old version of uh, old malwares here. So you can see here that for the Tingba um, example, there is a uniform distribution between the letters A and Z, which means that we're using all of the letters in the same amount of, uh, like, the same frequency. Now, obviously, this looks nothing like the English natural language or nothing like all of the domains we're usually using. Because, for example, we use a lot more um, vowels, or we use a lot more, uh, there's a lot more letters that we use frequently and infrequently. So obviously, this looks very different from any other domain that we're going to see. And for the dire example, you can see that they're using hexa characters. Like, this is obviously not something we're using usually in language or in domain name. So both of these should be pretty easy to detect uh, in traffic because they look very different from what we're usually using. But attackers aren't dumb. Like, they understand exactly everything that we understand as well, and they adapt. So here you can see example of two other DGA-based malwares that they adapted. And they said, OK, I'm not stupid. I'm going to use the characters I'm randomly choosing, but I'm going to make it look exactly like all of the domains in top of that someone million popular domains. So our former uh, intuition or heuristic wouldn't have worked, because now it looks exactly like everything that we usually query in traffic. But wait, we're still smarter than that. Like, we, we can do better, right? So I'm going to look at the two characters distribution, like how every two um, concatenated characters frequently are looking in the domain names. And again, you can see, OK, this is a heuristic that could work, because you can see there is a major difference between Alexa top 1 million and this DJ. But again, attackers are adapting. And here you can see another version of this specific DGA-based malware. And they adapt it. Now this heuristic wouldn't work because there's no way to distinguish between the two. So my, my main intuition here is that this cat and mouse game, we need something stronger. We need something better. We need something um, that would understand the pattern in a more profound way than just this ba very basic heuristic. So deep learning to the rescue. Um, so deep learning algorithms and models are used to model really interesting um, phenomena. And specifically here, we understood that we want to model a phenomena that is a pattern recognition phenomena. Like we want to understand essentially the regular expression that we're seeing in traffic. And this is why we chose this specific neural network, which is an LSTM architecture that is specifically designed for understanding patterns in sequences. And we were hoping that if we would show this neural network enough data about domains that are generated by DJs and domains that are not, it would understand the patterns that it's seeing 
and therefore understand if it's coming from a DG or not. And this idea was first published by um, Endgame, and you can see the paper here. And it was a really interesting idea because maybe we can uh, progress into understanding that the pattern is wrong and not just understanding that the distribution is wrong. So what we did uh, based on this idea is it said, OK, we need to train this uh, neural network and try it ourselves. And we're going to tweak it to, honor, to our understanding because one of the problems with, for example, academic research, which, again, I applaud them and um, I think the research is beautiful, is that usually when you take it out to the real world, specifically for a platform like Akamai, which is huge and so much traffic, then you're going to see some phenomena that you didn't expect and a lot of noise. And then all of these models are not really working. So it was a real challenge taking this idea and then formulating it in a way that you can actually use to detect and block traffic for everyone. So what we did is that we compiled a data set and we wanted to uh, teach the neural network to understand how does a DGA that's coming from, how does the domain that's coming from a DGA look like? And what you can see here is that we built a data set um, that is half DGA domains and half benign domains. Now, the DGA domains, I gave her an example. Um, there's a DGA archive um, that everyone can go and take, and I hope that maybe inspired by this talk, we're going to try it, try it yourself. We specifically took our own proprietary and your DGAs that we see in traffic, but I wanted to give an example of something open source that maybe all of you are inspired to use. And then on the benign case, at Akamai, we took normal traffic, but you can take take Alexa top 1 million, for example. And we fit it to the neural network that I just showed you and the architecture that I talked about. And we received, like, achieved really great accuracy. It was, a, it, it was above 90% accuracy. But one of the um, misfortunes or one of the results that we weren't happy about is that it wasn't able to classify exactly which malware family it came from. Now, think about it from your um, defense hat. When you alert your, uh, I don't know, the person you're defending that they have a DGA-based malware in their computer, it's not enough to block the traffic. You need to be able to tell them exactly which malware is issuing the square because they need to be able to mitigate the risk. They need to be able to go back to their computer and remove the threat. And it's not enough to just say, OK, I blocked it. It's, it's a lot of work, and it's a great, like, you did the 80% the probably, but we have to help them mitigate the threat. Now, this is a really difficult task. And I wanted to understand if I took this massive deep learning architecture that is supposed to be like the biggest gun I can use against this problem, why could it classify it? Like it made no sense. So this is probably the most mathematical um, slide in this presentation, so please bear with me. But I tried to understand why is it so difficult so I could understand potentially how can I solve this problem as well. Now, it should be noticed, no, no, it, it should be noted that um, solving this issue of classifying exactly which malware it came from is an issue that nobody solved before. So I took the neural network and I fit in all the data that I used from the DGAs and I wanted to showcase how does it look uh, in the deep learning eyes, quote unquote. Like how does the neural network see it? And once I visualized the space that the neural network built to understand if it's a DGA or not, I saw something really interesting. So here in this graph, every time you see a dot and a color, it represents a, a domain name and the DGA malware it came from. And what you can see here is that there are some really separable clusters here, right? You can see that the green cluster is separable and the um, purple one and so on and uh, the orange one. So it's understandable why, in general, we could understand if domains are benign or not. But what you can also see here is that some of the clusters are just too intertwined. For example, at the top cluster here, you can see that uh, the purple dots and the blue dots and the brown dots and the red dots are all intertwined. And this is a really interesting uh, thing to, to see because obviously if I can't uh, draw a line and then separate it, obviously a neural network can't as well. And the intuition here is also supported by real evidence that when I traced back and looked at the domains, all of the patterns that are describing the domains that are clustered here together 
actually have the same pattern. Like the malwares are using some very similar DGA code and they are generating a domain name that is, for example, seven characters, seven characters long and they're sampling the letters A to Z. Now, we all know that it's really common for malwares to share code and share, like there's a lot of stuff like that, but specifically for the DGA code, that's what made it so difficult because if they actually have the same pattern, it's obviously going to be very difficult to understand that it's coming from different patterns. So once I understood this was what was in the way of understanding and solving this issue, we had an idea of how we can actually solve this and then also create an algorithm that attributes the specific malware we see. So what I'm going to showcase here is an actual system that we have running in production and is going over, I think, the latest um, report is uh, 67 trillion DNS queries a day. So the first thing that we do is that we group um, each domains that are queried by, a, by one user in a very specified small time window. So here you can see, for example, say that this was the domains that we saw in traffic during this time window, is that you can see facebook.com and some very funny looking domains and then google.com with a typo and then two other um, funny looking domains. Now, this is because imagine that the user is actually um, querying and I don't know, browsing the internet, going to its Facebook page and so on. So obviously you're gonna see some domains that are normal traffic combined with the malware that is running in the background. And then what we do is that we run each domain through our deep learning model that we train together right now. And we ask it a very simple question on each and every domain. Do you think this is a DGA? And the net network replies was a result between a zero and one where zero would stand for no, this is not a DGA. And one is, yeah, I think it is. So you can see real results here that it thought, it thought that Facebook is not a DGA, it thought that these are um, very likely to be DGAs and google.com with a typo is not and so on. And then what we do, which was quite novel, is that we take these groups of domain that pass the threshold and were likely to be DGAs, and then we try to attribute them as a group and understand if they're all responding to the same pattern. And if they all uh, match the same regular expression, in some cases, we're able to specifically attribute and say, okay, this is all combining, um, matching to the same regular expression and also they're all fitting the very specific regular expression that is described by a malware called Loki, for example, or Dyer, for example, and so on and so forth. But what's also interesting here is that this system or this understanding that we need to be um, further investigating the pattern enables us also to group together domains that we're seeing in traffic. We understand they're coming from a DGA and they're all responding to a same pattern, but it's just not reported yet. Like nobody, um, found this malware yet, nobody reversed it, nobody talked about it, nobody even named it. So once we send something like that and understand that we have something completely novel in our system, we uh, attribute it or call it unknown number one. Now, one may ask, okay, why don't you just research the malware and then report it? Now, you need to bear in mind and remember that my point of view is the network. So I am the network in a way, and I never have access to the endpoint itself. So if any of you ever comes across a malware that has DGA and would like to collaborate in this, I would love to. But currently, we have a, a number of DGA-based malwares that we're tracking that are just simply not named yet. So this should enable us to track it over time and block it over time and see if it's evolving and so on. But sadly, these are remaining unknown groups that we're just tracking. Now, to report your real results, because what I showcased you here is something that we actually have running in production for a while now, and it's a beast of detecting DGA domains and blocking them in traffic. So it's automatically detecting and blocking about 2.5 million domains a day, which is insane. And it's independently blocking about 70 million DNS requests a day. Now, this is subtracting the DNS request requests going to my laboratory, which you'll see in a second, and you'll understand why I um, separated the metrics. We have very near zero, like very near to zero percent uh, false positives. Now, this is an interesting thing I would like to note in a in a moment that 
one of the most interesting things when you're going to create a detection beast like this is that you need to make sure you're not making mistakes because once this automatic thing is in motion and you're all basing this on statistics and deep learning and so on, you need to have mechanisms that would make sure that I'm not blocking anything that would make you upset because I'm blocking and influencing the internet. So what we did is that we have, I think, massive like amounts of algorithms that are also in charge of making sure that we don't have false positives and we are ha we have a lot of fail safes. So this entire system is completely autonomous um, and it's also autonomous in making sure that it doesn't make mistakes. And lastly, I think currently we track about eight unknown or unreported uh, possibly zero day DGAs. Now, the reason that I said I said zero day and I'm not like question mark is because maybe it's a known malware, just a new variant. We don't know, but once nobody reported it, we have no way of knowing specifically the binary that it's coming from. And now I want to drill down into MiloBot, which is one of the detections made by the system and is really interesting and I wanted to share with the community. So first, let's go over how MiloBot operates. Now, this is based, again, on a report by uh, Deep Instinct and Century Within, and the reason is I don't have the sample myself. So the first stage of this uh, downloader specifically is to query this very interesting looking uh, domain name. And it obviously gets an IP in return. This is the, how the DNS protocol works. And, and the malware is communicating with this specific IP that was given. And essentially, or logically, it's asking, OK, where should I go next? So this server is going to respond with a very specific URL that is based on an IP um, that the malware needs to go and grab the second stage malware. So the, the third stage here would be that the malware actually goes and grabs the second stage malwares and gets it back to, their, to the uh, victim computer. And lastly, they would run this um, second stage malware. And then this is unknown malicious activity. So Deep Instinct reported that it was seen in the wild that the second stage malware used was Khaleesi, but we all understand that it could be something different uh, every other day. And I think you would all understand that my system specifically detected it in a very early stage, which is the first stage of only trying to um, get the link for downloading the second stage malware. So what did we detect in traffic? So our system alerted us that this specific domain uh, and the group of domains it's coming from in traffic looks like it's coming from a DGA. And we detected about 1,400 domains and the um, the pattern that we saw is, is as such. So it has the prefix of the character M, then a number between 0 and 43, then a domain name that is generated uh, by a DGA, and then one of these TLDs. Now, wait, is this everything that we detected? No, it's not, because this is everything that was reported on in the blogs that I showed you in 2018. But actually, our system detected a lot more, about four times more than that. So. We did detect this domain, and we did group it together. But actually, what our system saw, and now that you understand the system, you understand that it's grouping things together that came together in traffic and fit the same pattern. And we actually found what we understand to be four different variants of this operation. And what we saw in traffic here is that we had the first uh, reported variant, but we had also three other variants with different patterns that we saw in traffic. So you can see we also had a variant um, that is prefixed with the character X, the number 0 to 43 in the domain generated by a DGA. We also saw a variant that was prefixed with the word green and a number and so on. And lastly, a variant that looks somewhat uh, maybe different, but again, our system grouped it together. And it was prefixed with the letter V and then only the number 1 and then a DGA domain. Now, this was really interesting because, as I told you, once we get something that is unknown, we want to investigate it and understand the most that we can about this detection. So once our system alerted us about this, we wanted to um, go back and understand or research and, and see, wait, is it a mistake or is it actually connected? Like When we saw the reports, we were confused because this is very different than what we saw uh, the reports on. So what we tried to, tried to do at the time, and this was the beginning of 2019, is that we wanted to look back at the infrastructure of what we're seeing in traffic. So again, keep in mind that all I can do is research it from the network point of view, 
and therefore I need to use a lot of open source or engines that I can use, such as VirusTotal in this case, because I don't have access to the computer itself. So what you can see here is an entity graph um, connecting the different things that I saw regarding the infrastructure of this botnet. And because I have the network point of view, I could specifically look for the domains that I saw that were actually resolving. Like, as I told you at the beginning, the domains that were actually used for the communication for the command and control. And once I looked it up in VirusTotal, what you can see here is that every time you see a, a blue or I think purple globe here, it represents a domain or a subdomain. And every time you see a flag, it represents an IP in the autonomous system it's coming from. So what you can see here on the left is the two domains that we saw in traffic resolving or having been used for the communication for the command and control for the M variant, which means that the variant that was blogged about in Central Link, the deep instant, and so on. And I also put all of the subdomains so you can see the pattern of the queries exactly as I explained in the slide before. And you can see that it's resolving to a lot of IPs, but what was interesting here is that here on the right, you see the domain that we're resolving to the X variant which again is something that our system connected the dots together. And you can see the pattern is similar, but different domains and different variant from the environment. But what you can see here that it's really cool is that they are resolving, they have shared resolving to same, some IPs and specifically three. And this was really cool but because this is what, this was like, wow, so they are connected, like they're communicating to the same server. It has to be um, related with certain traffic and so on. And what was also interesting about this is this specific Portuguese flag. So when we researched it, what we understood it to be, or our theory is that this is a sinkholing effort. Now, this makes a lot of sense because as I said, the M variant was reported at the time and it would make sense that the security community would try and block this. But what was interesting here is that no matter that they tried to sinkhole it, obviously the operation was still successful because they had so many other fallbacks and fallback IPs. So this was really cool, but then we wanted to go further and we wanted to see the other variants. So we did the same analysis and we looked for the green variant and the V1 variant. Now for the green variant, again, you can see the same story that they have shared IP. And what was interesting in this specific um, graph is that for the V1 variant, we can see that it's also connected, but what we understood here is that it's all there were, uh, I think, th yeah, 671 domains resolving to a Portuguese IP that we understood to be a sinkholing effort. And what we understood here is that probably the V1 variant was something that was successfully sinkholed and is not operational anymore. And we even found evidence that this might be the first variant of this specific op operation, and that was just the beginning. So as this was the earliest one, we understood that this one is probably successfully sinkhole, but these two are still operational. And this was, again, really cool because we saw all of the connections and that everything are, is still um, really related and we understood that our system was making the right call. And now, preparing for this presentation for 2020, I decided to go and look for how uh, the infrastructure looks right now. So again, my system is tracking everything automatically, I just pulled everything that is belonging to this group. And what I saw was really cool. So first of all, I saw that there are a lot more resolving domains that I saw before. And you can see that the graph looks much bigger. And there's a lot more IPs here, like they really grew their infrastructure. They're, they're growing, business, business is booming. And again, you can see the connection between the M variant and the X variant, and you can see the sinkling efforts and so on. But what was really cool this time that I prepared for this research is that I also tried to look at the communicating files to these servers to see if they actually have the same file. Maybe I can even find the file that I'm looking for so, so strongly. And what was cool here is the specific cases. You can see here down at the bottom and at the top that there are a few files that are communicating to the N variant servers and the X variant servers, even though they are not the same server. So it was really cool because maybe these are the malware files and just by based on configuration, it's going to the X variant or the M variant. We are not really sure. But we were really interested in seeing this because we essentially understood that the operation is growing. And now I can also show you how it looks from the network point of view, right? I'm the DNS empire, I'm detecting this. So how does it look in our traffic? And why is it so interesting? And you should all be aware of this. 
So this is a graph representing the amount of DNS queries that we see a day going to MyLobot domains. And just to make sure that we're all seeing it correctly, the Y scale here is in billion of DNS queries. So you can see that at the lowest point, which is August 2020, currently like today, it's at about 0 0.2 billion DNS queries a day, which is 200 million DNS queries a day. Now, for comparison, I also wrote uh, what we see for other botnets or the most prominent botnets after MoiloBot. So you can see that for the botnet called Sp PikeSpa, we see about 1 million DNS queries a day. And for QSnet, 1 million. For Imotet, half a million. So you can understand that MyLobot does 200 times more queries than all of the other botnets that we've seen in our, in our platform, which is insane. Like, this is an insane amount of traffic. So if you circle back, you remember I told you we block about 70 million DNS queries a day to botnets coming from DGA without counting in MyLobot, because obviously MyLobot is skewing this to a whole different scale. Now, sadly, you can see that here there was this huge spike that we still can't attribute and understand what happened here, again, because we're seeing it only in the network platform. But my theory is that the drop here is just the successful efforts of the sinkholing that we saw. And I wanted to give another intuition of how their operation is just um, getting widespread, is that I wanted to give an assessment of how many infected entities are there by this botnet called MyLobot. Now, it should be noted that when I say an entity, I'm talking about uh, an entity I'm seeing in a platform. It could be either a single user or a NUT, which means an, an, enter an enterprise gateway. And this gateway could represent maybe tens of thousands of computers. So when I count one entity, it could be essentially tens of thousands of computers infected. So this graph could actually be much higher than it shows here. But what you can see here still is that over the course of the last year, MyLobot managed to pretty much double their amount of infected entities. You can see that at the end of 2019, the 19, they had about 3,000 or 4,000 infected entities. And dating right now, we are about 7,000 to 8,000 8, infected users. Now, this is insane, right? This is a really successful operation that's just growing and growing. And I thought that once I saw all of this, I have to share this with the world. Like, I have to be um, able to tell everyone, listen, you really need to be alerted about this. Now, I want to go, I think, quickly about a summary of what I showed you here. Um, so the first thing that we covered is what is a DGA, and that it's a piece of code that malwares, malwares use to generate domain names and then to form the CNC channel. And then we talked about the defense system that we built. And specifically, I hope that I'm inspiring you to do something very similar because I personally think this detection piece and detection and defense system is doing incredibly uh, well for our, for our platform. Um, and how we did that is that we train a deep neural network and then we use it on our light traffic to block things. And lastly, we covered MyLobot from our perspective and from our understanding, which is a super active, newly seen botnet and I think we should all be really aware because who knows what the malicious activities of second stages are doing. And the takeaways I want you guys to take from here are, are twofold. So the first one is um, the countermeasures. So obviously, I think you all understand by now that monitoring DNS traffic enabled us to detect it and therefore to block it and successfully block it. And to go over, to, like to go the distance, we will publish all of the IOCs that we're seeing in China specifically for this botnet, now that we understand that everything is all really connected. And the main takeaway here is that DJ Detect and Beast are possible. Like even though that the um, recent work and recent papers or academic papers showcase successful lab results, now I'm sharing with you the successful real world results. And these are really huge scale real world results. And lastly, I wanted to give you uh, one of the takeaways that I think that threat intelligence from a network perspective isn't as crippled as uh, we will all think. Like, I would love to reverse engineer the malware myself, but I think we were able to uh, get to some really interesting results just investigating from the network point of view. So I hope this inspired you guys as well. And uh, thank you so much for your time.